Have you ever been overwhelmed with large data sets and epic Excel sheet crashes? This is where Power BI comes in as your savior. Its powerful platform allows you to pull data from a large number of data sources, such as SQL databases, ERPs, and even Google Analytics. In today's video, we're going to have a look at the basics of how to get started, manipulate the data in Power Query, as well as setting up your dashboard and sharing this with others. What's the point of having nice dashboards when you can't show off? If you would like to follow along, there is a link in the description below with the data files. So without further ado, let's jump into it. To get Power BI, you come across to the Microsoft Store right here. Click onto that. And once you're here, we type in Power BI. You come up with the first three options. So Power BI be here. This app is for the web functionality, Power BI Desktop is what we're going to use to build our dashboards, and that's a report builder that you can use but has a limited functionality. Let's go in and click onto this, and if it's not installed, you would have an install button here. Let's open, and once you've opened the application, you will come up with a screen like this. You can, we're just going to go on to get data now. And once you click on that, it opens up a number of different options right here. And once you've come into where your folder is, you can select one by one, or you can simply add all of the data together. So you can actually add a folder if you want. We're going to try the sales data first. Let's open this. And now when the data arrives here, you simply click onto sales data. You can see that your data has been loaded. You can change the data or transform the data. So for your actual data sets, if anything needs to be changed, you can. But for now, we're just going to load this. And this will now bring up your data set right on the side here. And you can see that it detects already the type of data that's there. So whether it's a date, a text, quantity, or an actual number that can be summed up comes up here. Let's get to the next data set. item data let's press ok and this will load up again the item data click onto that and you can see that you have a few things here now you can just check through your data set but let's say that in the country right here we have united kingdom over here united kingdom and as we scroll oh we have a uk now we might want to change this this is not going to change it in the original data set but it's going to change it for our reporting in the dashboard press transform data once you transform it brings up the power query editor here we can have some changes so let's scroll across to the country and here what we can do is replace values so let's simply click on to replace values and what do we want to find now do we want everything in the uk do we want everything in the united kingdom you can decide but let's try United Kingdom and we are going to replace this with UK. Now let's type that in and press OK and you have a number of advanced options as well here if you want to change cases or special characters etc. Now let's have a look at that and as you can see it's just changed it right here and it's replaced the value just for this data set but not in the original Excel sheet. Close and apply and we can close that, we can apply the changes and you can see that the item data is now over here. And finally, we're going to add another sheet. Once again, we click on the Excel, employee data. Now remember, you can do all of this if you just add the folder directly. Now, employee data and location. So in this Excel sheet, you have two tables or two tabs. So we can click onto the employee data you can have a look that everything is fine here. Let's press load. And we can once again go back and get into the employee data. We want to get the next table. Now the next table is the location data. If you have a look at the location data, you can see that it has column one, column two, column three. But actually you want to have the titles or the column headers above. Now, a nice way to do this is click onto 
the table, transform the data. And once again, we are in the Power Query editor. Here, we simply need to go up to use first row as headers. You have a number of options. You can also have the first use the headers as a first row. So we are going to replace that. And you can see location name, code and manager name has come up. Press close and apply. And now we have the data or the tables that are going to be used for our data visualization. If you have forgotten to make any changes, you can simply go on to any of the data sets and go to the table view. You can find the table view here and you can change any data right there. Now we're going into the model view and in the model view, we are going to create some relationships between our data. In Power BI, it can detect some of the data if, for example, you have the same data type or you have the same name on the header and the same data type, it will recognize it. But we can also create some relationships within our data. Now, as we can see right here, we can manage relationships. Right now, we have an SKU code and an item data that is related. We can also click onto the auto detect and it has no relationships found. Now, what do we wanna do here? We want to add a location code from this data set to the location code here. So we can go on to manage relationship or we can simply drag this onto the location code and create the data set in that way. Same here, manager name, we want to put that across to the manager's name right here. And now we have a relationship that comes through. There isn't any relationship between the item data and the employee data for now. So we are just going to leave that, go back to our report view. Let's get started by building our first chart. Now what we can do is we can look at all our data tables and see what we want, but let's start with our sales data. So simply close up the others. Now you can go across to your visuals. If you're using an older version of Power BI, this will come up on the left of the pane over here. But let's click onto the data set and you can see that you have a number of different chart options. Or the other option is simply just drag in a date and you will see that Power BI comes up with a particular chart that you think they th it thinks that you might need. And we're going to use date sold with quantity and dump the quantity in there. Now it comes up with the chart is exactly what we want. Now in the chart over here, we might want to make some changes. So maybe we don't want to see the quarters and that's fine. It doesn't really change anything, but say that we just want to see the days or the months, we can also change those. We can filter down and to see now we have month by month data. We can also change the date and the title over here. You just go across to the format here, your data sets and your format and click onto that and you have titles right here. So instead of having some of quantity sold, we can just write quantity, quantity sold by date. Now you have a number of different options here. You can change it to a bigger heading if you like. You can change even the color to let's go for orange. So now you have a data set that is the way that you want to see it right here. Just click out of it to click and if you wanted to make any changes, click onto the data set, onto the table and you can see that the outline comes where you can change the properties, the size, the style, and in a lot of other options right here. Now that was using just one set of data. We're going to go across to this using different sets of data. Now say that we want to have a look at the location name. Okay. If we put in the location code, we can see codes, but that makes no sense to us. And as the data is now linked between the tables, let's just clear this location code we want to add location name. Location name, we can drag that right in there. And now we have location name. And now we want to add what is the name of the manager. So we can add that simply next to it from the same data set. Perhaps we want to put what salary the manager is getting. We go across and we check on to 
salary and that will now bring it into a chart that it wants to but we want to go back to a table so we're just going to go back to the table right here and we can see that we have the salary up here if you want to change the name of any of the headers you simply come across here and once again this is not going to change it in the data set it's just going to change it for visual effect right here so we can type in location name if that's what you want to see you can change the sum of salary as well to just a dollar salary sign right here now you might want to see the salary with a dollar sign or in a different format so you simply go back to the original data set click onto the table first we have now checked the salary click onto that and it brings up the column tools so instead of a whole number we are going to change this to a dollar sign and now you see that your dollar has come up in your data set as well now, when you have large data sets, it doesn't make sense to see all of your data from your Excel sheets here. So we can use things like slicers. Now, the most common slicer that we can use is a date slicer. So you can have the option up here to add a slicer and you can simply just drag the date from here and dump it right here. Now, this brings up a standard format of a date, which is quite useful and you can just move that along up here so as you can see you have a line chart you can move the date up and down and you can also go up and down with your data set right here so this shows you say you want just the sales of september you can just go there and click on september 2022 and of course this doesn't make a lot of sense now but you can have data that is linked to your sets so to clear selections just click onto that now it brings back all our data let's add one more table and this time we're going to add the stock on hand so now we have item data right here let's put in the item data as another table here and we can add the stock quantity right here so we can see all the stock that's available for the products you can change this if you want to any different format we can also change it to the quantity sold if you want so let's go here and put the quantity sold and this doesn't make a lot of sense like this so we could use other options such as an area chart that doesn't also look really very nice but you have another chart over here called a tree map and a tree map then shows you a different way of looking at your data what you can do is filter onto data and say that you just want to look at cheese slices you can click onto the cheese slices shows you the date that it was sold to clear the filter you just uncheck it and it brings back all your data if you want to have a look at just chicago sales you can click onto chicago and you can see what's been sold in chicago with the tree map and you can see the quantity sold right here as well now, if we want to see the total revenue or sales that are coming from a particular SKU or product, we can just go across to our sales data. But if you have a look at the columns, we have profit, unit, cost of goods, a price and a quantity. We don't actually have the total right here. So what we need to do is make a measured field. This is very simple to do. We simply go onto sales data and we are now going to go to more options. We're going to go to a new measure. There is an easier way to do this where it will help you just make the measure without too much of thinking. So we go across here to the quick measure and the quick measure is going to be the quantity sold by, let's click the calculation, we're simply going to do a multiplication. And as you can see, you can have a number of different calculations over here. So we are doing a simple multiplication. We are going to add from the sales data. And you can add this as well from the item data. So we could do a cost price to make the cost of goods if you wanted to. But we're going to do the unit price. And we are going to multiply this by the quantity sold. And now we can add this. When you add this, it creates a, a calculated field which uses a standard name as you've put into the formula and you can change this name if you want to. So instead of having unit price and quantity sold, we are going to simply type in 
total sales. And let's do that. So now we have total sales right here. We can simply drag that in and we can see that we have a total number of revenue for all our data set. Now, once we click onto, for example, we want to go to mobile phone, we click that, we can see how many sales we have just for mobile phones. And if we want to click onto New York, we'll see that we have 119,000 in sales over there. Now, while this is an introduction, there are a whole load of features in Power BI. And what we are going to do right now is just have a look. If your data has now been changed, you need to come in and just refresh and all your data sets will get updated. The final thing that we're going to do is publish the data. So we click on to publish. And do we want to save it? Yes, you can call it Power BI test and save it in a place that you want just like any other file or folder. Once you've published it, we publish it into my workspace. Or once again, you can publish it to anywhere else that you want. Now you can also look at the view tab with mobile layouts and that's something that you can do. Now, when we had a look at the beginning, we just go and open the Power BI test in Power BI. Once you've opened Power BI, you are going to be on the online app and you will find all your data right here. You can file, you can save a copy, download, print. You can even embed this within any of your websites or portals, or you can generate a QR code and share it. What's very nice about this, you can also export it into Excel if you want to analyze, and you can also embed it as an image, a live data, or even a PDF. Now with the paid versions of Power BI, you have a lot of other functionality by having real time changes with your teams and having any of the data sets that are in any shared folders dynamically update for you. Thank you for watching today and I hope that you've learned to level up your skills. If you would like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I would always appreciate a thumbs up and a like. Until next time, happy data solving and see you then.